Hey, I'm Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to multiply fractions, but we are going to focus on a technique that involves reducing before you multiply. This is sometimes referred to as cross-canceling. But before we get started, we need to get out. Charlie, he better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? All right. Let's get started right there. One eighth times six fifth. Now, notice, Charlie, we're multiplying fractions. How do you multiply fractions? Straight across the top, straight across Very the top. Very nice, but we can reduce before we multiply because the six and the eight have a common factor of two. So let's divide that out. Six divided by two is three, eight divided by two is four, and notice in our numerator, we have one times three, and our denominator is four times five. Now we multiply, we get three twentieths, and that is our final answer there. Okay, let's do another one here. Seven sixths, times six-fifths. Well, notice six and six will cancel. What does that mean? It means they both have a common factor of six. Six divided by six is one. Six divided by six is, is one. And you can disregard those. We say they cancel out. But let's write out our steps. In the numerator, we have seven times one. And in the denominator, we have one times five. So our answer is seven-fifths. Some people initially look at the problem and say, oh, the six cancel. So my answer is seven fifths. That's fine, but always show your work. Okay, here we have 12 sevenths times 21 over eight. 21 and seven have a common factor of seven, so let's divide that out. 21 divided by seven is three. Seven divided by seven is one. Now 12 and eight have a common factor of four. So let's divide those by four. 12 divided by four is three, and eight divided by four is two. Now some people, when they look at 12 and eight, they think, oh, there's a common factor of two, let me divide that out. You can do it that way, but in your next step, you're gonna to have to reduce. No matter how you approach the problem, we will all end up with the same answer if you're doing things correctly. So anyway, with this problem, in our numerator, we have three times three, and our denominator is one times two, therefore our answer is nine over two. Oh, what fun, let's do another one. Here we have 11 ninths times three-fourths times six-fifths. Okay, Charlie, give me two numbers that have a common factor. Three and nine. That's right, they both have a common factor of three. Three divided by three is one, nine divided by three is three. Okay, Charlie, are there any other numbers? Six and four. Yes, six and four both have a common factor of two. Six divided by two is three, four divided by two is two. Okay, Charlie, now with this problem here, notice our numerator is 11, times one times three, and our denominator is three times two times five. Now, notice we have a three on the numerator and a three in the denominator. So we can divide those numbers out. They have a common factor of three, right? Three divided by three is one, three divided by three is one. And so in our numerator, we have 11 times one times one, which is 11. And in our denominator, we have 1 times 2 times 5, which is 10. And so our answer is 11 tenths. So we had to reduce here. Okay, Charlie, let's do another one here. 21 over 32 times 16 over 15 times 10 over 7. Don't get scared. All right, Charlie, notice 16 and 16. 16 and 32 have a common factor of 16, right? We can divide 16 and 32 by 16. 16 divided by 16 is 1. 32 divided by 16 is 2. Okay. 21 and 7 have a common factor of 7. So let's divide that out. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Now 10 and 15 have a common factor of 5. So let's divide that 5 out. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And notice in our numerator, we have 3 times 1 times 2. And our denominator is 2 times 3 times 1. Now notice here, we can divide out the 3's, right? We say they cancel, they become 1, because they're both divisible by 3. We can also divide out the 2's, because they both have a common factor of 2, and when you divide them by 2, you get 1's. And so, notice, in the numerator, we're left with 1's, 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. In our denominator, we're left with 1's, 1 times 1 is 1 is 1. And so our final answer is 1 divided by 1, which is 1. That is our final answer for this problem. Oh, what fun. Let's do another fun one. All right, Charlie, don't get scared. 
18 over 33 times 9 over 14 times 22 over 3 times 21 over 63. All right, Charlie. Now, I'm going to help you out with this. 18 and 3 have a common factor of 3, so I'm going to start with that. Now, there's many different ways of doing this problem, but I'm going to do it this way. You can try it another way, but as long as we're doing everything correctly, we'll all get the same answer here. So let me start with this. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Now, let's do the 9 and 63, because 9 and 63 have a common factor of 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 63 divided by 9 is 7. Remember, 7 times 9 is 63. Now, let's go to the 22 and the 33. Both those numbers have a common factor of 11. 22 divided by 11 is 2, because 2 times 11 is 22. 33 divided by 11 is 3, because 3 times 11 is 33. And now we have the 21 and 14 left. They both have a common factor of 7, so let's divide that out. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 14 divided by 7 is what, Charlie? 2. Very nice there. Now, notice in our numerator, we have 6 times 1 times 2 times 3. In our denominator, we have 3 times 2 times 1 times 7. Notice here, we have a 2 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator. So they can cancel out, meaning they become 1s. And now, we have a 3 in the numerator and a 3 in the denominator, so those will cancel out. They become 1s, right? And so, what do we have left in our numerator? It's 6 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 6. And in our denominator, we have 1 times 1 times 1 times 7, which is 7. And 6 sevenths is our final answer. Whew. Let's take a break, and I'll see you again soon.